everyone, good evening. This is Alex from Women of Culture. I am about to go live with Stephanie Hirsch and we're gonna um, chat a little bit more about her work and process. So let me just invite her to join us. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> You. you as well <laughs> yeah it's always technology is always interesting but we, we got it to work so <laughs> thank you so much for being here and um chatting with us today well, with me <laughs> yeah um so i thought first i just um have you introduce yourself a little bit in your own words i love um you know, even for those who do know you, just to learn a little bit more about um, how you how you started, where you grew up, um, and how you discovered art. So my name is Stephanie Hirsch. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist and a mother, mm -hmm. and I guess a um, seeker of the truth which <laughs> resides within ourselves. And I grew up mainly mainly in New York, but I was back and forth um, uh, New York and LA. Okay. So, um, I guess I've always been a free spirit. I was a dancer when I was younger. I loved fashion. I loved just, I was in my own dream world. And, yeah. um, you know, I saw things, not in a weird way, but that weren't there. I, 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 my mind was just limitless. My being was one of this freedom. So, I guess that's where art is created, is from the soul. Yeah. And I've always lived in that place. I love that. I, I have a dance background as well. I feel like that was um, how I first started getting into the arts. So that's really cool. Um, and um, I was curious because now you're primarily a mixed media artist, but I was wondering um, how you started out. I mean, did did you ever paint or what, um, you know, what your art background was and how it came to the process you use today? So, um, like I said, I think I've always been an artist. An artist is not just someone that takes a, you know, a paintbrush and puts right. it onto a canvas. An artist is a creator. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I danced. And then um, I had, um, when I was 24, I started a, a company, fashion design. I started with accessories. And then I went into resort wear, mm -hmm. um, which is another form of artistry. Yeah. And then the um, crescendo was, uh, art really finding me in terms of more, I guess, the, like, just the simplistic terms of what an artist is. Um, and uh, I, I've always, I had, um, in 2008, I had uh, something called the Dark Night of the Soul, where uh, it's literally you die as a human, <laughs> and soul dies to be reborn into what you're always supposed to become. Yeah. And uh, words have power. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that. And uh, I'm kind of like, I'm very all like I'm all over the place, <laughs> uh, but in a great way. I mean, I think yeah. everything makes sense to me. Some people get lost in me, but right. uh, you know, if you put it in front of me, uh, I'll listen. Like mm -hmm. I have to see it really boldly in my face. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I think I've always been on the journey of awakening. Didn't yeah. know it, but I was attracted to it, mm -hmm. and uh, I had lived my life up to that point allowing very toxic people into my life, yeah. really chaos, a lot of chaos in my life. Mm -hmm. And I would blame, blame, blame everybody else instead of looking within. And I love Bob Marley. And I love the saying, free yourself from mental sla slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Mm -hmm. None but ourselves can free our minds. And the only thing that made sense to me, which I had utilized in my, um, my, my clothing was beads and embroidery for their depth. Oh, okay. And the potion. They had something. They weren't flat. They, they yeah. like literally and figuratively made sense. So mm -hmm. I, art came to me. I didn't go to it. It was just something that I had to do and put on my wall in order for me to take ownership over myself. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful and beautiful. <laughs> it's, I mean, I feel like um, the first time we met and I first heard you speak, I could relate to so much of what you were talking about around like kind of going um going through this awakening but um i love that you've been able to i mean not intentionally but it just kind of i guess 
manifested into art in a way. Yeah. Um, I think that art really saved me. I mean, yeah. I couldn't save myself, but I knew mm -hmm. I had to. Yeah. And this, I guess, form of meditation and accountability. Mm. I became accountable. If I'm going to put that on to, you know, a six foot canvas and yes. these type of words, like, I was like, I better own that. Like, that's powerful stuff. And I'm putting it out there. Like, I need to become that. Yeah. I want to become it. That's inside of me. Like, that's who I am. I've never been it, but I'm going to become it. Mm. Yeah. In a really beautiful way. In a really yeah. beautiful, gorgeous way. Right. Not it, not so much like forcing it, but yeah. This, yeah. Mm. Um, I was curious if the the words and phrases that you use, I mean, um, are you usually looking for those or they come to you or, you know, how does that work? You know, you can, um, you have to let it flow. And I, uh, I'm a big TM person. Mm -hmm. um, I really try and just, you know, it's like, it comes to me and it becomes such like it engulfs me and it, it encompasses me and it, it becomes whatever it's supposed to be, but I allow it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't force anything in this life. You can't right. force people to like you. You can't force things to happen. So I just allow it and I really allow it to come to me. And then I don't even know half the time. Sometimes I get, I mean, I'll never forget the one where I had to trust the universe. And I was like, okay. And I just put it on there. People were like, that's unbelievable. I never understood it till like five years later. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Surrender to it. Like, I, so I guess I just, I'm using, you know, I think we're all here and I'm being used as a conduit to, so people can tap into what the truth right. is. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because it sounds like the, some of the words and things are also like a reminder to you or, or you <laughs> speaking to yourself. In a way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A hundred but I, you know, it's funny because I feel that I've gotten over, it used to be, I was on a really, I've been on a really big learning curve in the past 10 years, huge. Yeah. And I just feel, and they say that like, you know, you read all the, um, you know, higher consciousness and spiritual sites. And they said, there's been a big shift in the six, in the last six months and mm -hmm. people have really propelled. It's like, I always say it's like it was a football and like the field goal and you're never there. We're here on the physical plane. So we keep learning, but all those things that I did for the past 10 years, I was like, wow, I get it. Oh my God, I get it now. Like, and I lived it and I, I just went so low to like rise so high and just be so at peace. So it's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, um, it's really, I mean, I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. And it's funny that, um, I mean, you're obviously first and foremost an artist, but I feel like there's, yeah, like so much spirituality and, um, you know, everything that you do. So um, I I was wondering, I mean, you mentioned like a, a journey of awakening and I, I would just was curious if you could talk a little bit more about that. I mean, you've touched on it a little bit, but, mm -hmm. and how that kind of, comes through in your in your work so um you know i think that i the door they've been knocking on the door for a long time mm -hmm. they whoever that is spirit <laughs> god whatever you want to say i mean i'm for a long time like at 10 years old i remember i remember just sitting there going there's got to be something better than this mm -hmm. like it just i knew there was more for me and i've always been attracted to spirituality I was reading like Herman Hess at 12 years old and, oh, wow. and James Joyce and Joseph Campbell. And I just, it was like that nourished my soul, but I didn't mm -hmm. trust myself. I didn't trust who I was and mm -hmm. I had a lot of chaos around me and a lot of dysfunction. And I let it in. Mm -hmm. I didn't have boundaries. I didn't have a sense of self or trusting my gut. So um, I had to learn a lot of la harsh life lessons. Harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wouldn't wake up. I wouldn't listen. And they say, if you don't listen, the lessons get harsher and harsher. Uh -huh. And, yeah. you know, like I said, 2008 was a big awakening, really being yeah. pushed. And then 2000, started in 12, I had like, really, it was bad. Uh -huh. And, uh, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So if anybody can learn from me, 
Mm -hmm. about self-love, self-awareness, being powerful, but peaceful and, you know, beautiful and caring and loving, but honoring yourself first. Like yeah. there's so many toxic people that haven't healed their wounds. So they're on their own trips. So I lovingly let them go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a very valuable lesson and can be hard <laughs> for all of us to learn. But and trusting um, yourself. I think I think trusting yourself, trusting mm -hmm. your intuition. Like I always say, yeah. that's spirit, that's God, that's 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 the truth speaking through us. Right. You know the truth by the way it feels. You know the truth by the way it feels. Like mm -hmm. I dishonored myself way too many times in my life, knowing. Well, maybe they're not really like that. Well, I'm going to hurt their feelings. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah but you don't be bitter or angry. And I, I swore to myself, I would just be more loving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so I, I wanted to, I mean, this actually, um, what you just said also made me think like women tend to, to especially <laughs> do that and be overly giving and understanding to people who aren't good for us. But I also um, was thinking about how um, a lot of your work explores the concept of femininity and, you know, uses sort of traditionally more like maybe feminine or, or crafty type materials and, um, you know, what, um, what that means to you and, and what you hope to um, convey okay. about yeah. So it's like, it's true. It's laborious. It's women's work. Like we were used to be like, give it all, be the most selfish, just give everything. Yeah. No, no, we are, we have, you know, I really do believe in the divine feminine. I think we come here with the most gorgeous strength, mm -hmm. but we need to utilize those strengths in a powerful, peaceful, authoritative way. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these gifts of, of, you know, I say that we, with or without children, we have the vehicle that brings spirit into human form. We are the closest thing to knowing mm -hmm. the truth in yeah. terms of our intuition, our gut intuition. And we use that in a way of creating. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a wink, wink. Like what I do is like laborious and hard and, yeah. you know. I'm going to make it beautiful and meditative. It's, it's like, just so they say in Kabbalah, like turn the channel, mm. turn it. I turned it up a notch mm. to make it like we have this gift. Yeah. So I'm going to make it into something that's take this gorgeous medium that's meditative, that delves deep, that illuminates the light with it and take powerful worlds or even like harder objects and feminize them. It's the, it's the balancing within ourselves. Mm. We don't just need to be this like docile little creature. We can rise up. We are warriors. We are yeah. fighters. We are lovers. We are everything all in one. Right. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not like, I wouldn't say feminist, like how it used to be. Right. It's owning our power. Yeah. Owning who we are and trusting ourselves. Mm hmm yeah, very true. Um, yeah, that I, made me think of another question just about how long does it take to create um, one of your works? I mean, I guess like a, I'm sure it depends on the scale and the, um, but you know, like a, even a small one, I imagine takes quite, quite amount of time. There's a lot of detail. You know, I look at the time it takes for me to get the message, mm. to feel the words, like it, things ruminate in my head for years sometimes okay. or instant, but the physicality of it, takes mm -hmm. time. So a large gift tea can take four months. It could take six months. Mm -hmm. um, a smaller one, you know, a couple of weeks. So it's definitely labor intensive. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, very meditative as well for, yeah. for you. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Um, I guess uh, you touched on it a little bit, but I was just curious. Um, you know, if there's anything that you hope people might take away from your work or, you know, feel when they experience it, um, do you feel like you're trying to convey a specific message or is it, um, is it kind of open? I don't really try to do anything. I just yeah. try to be and like, yeah. like I said, I really, you know, each of us are given our own divine gift. So right. this is the gift I've been giving. Mm -hmm. I've been given a, I've been used, I'm um, used as a vehicle and a conduit to awakening, yeah. to finding the power within ourselves, mm -hmm. to being the peaceful, most loving, healing, 
ourselves so we can rise into the truth of who we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've all gone through trauma. We've all had messed up shit in our life. Like, mm-hmm. we all have it. But it's how you rise. It's how you come out of it. You come out glorious. You come out gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You come out and you're standing in your truth. And that's what I hope people get from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to make anybody feel anything. Right. I do know what the truth is in terms of living a life of purity and peace and love. Yeah. 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 I, um, that made me think about, you know, what, how this whole current crisis is affecting people. And um, I imagine it sounds like you have some good tools for, <laughs> for coping with that. Do you think? I've already been to the bottom of it. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, I'd like, yeah. I, by, by the way, 100%. It was funny. I was talking to my kids about it. And they're like, oh, we, we've gone through crisis and everything. And, yeah. you know, it's all good. No like, listen, it's, it's hard. And I, I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not simplifying it. And I'm not saying right. it's really bad for some people and everything like that. But it's more about surrendering to what life is trying to show you. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I do believe this is a direct response to humanity to slow down. It's gone so out of control. People are becoming so inauthentic. It's for everything's for show and to show everything and running at a pace that's impossible mm-hmm. to continue with. Yeah. And like the noise, the noise, the input, the input, instead of saying, how can you know self yeah. without the quietness, for slowing sure. down? Also, like even in terms of, I mean, we don't need that much. Yeah. We don't need the instant thing. We don't, we want it and it's great, but the constant like need mm-hmm. to have, to do, to go, to be, it's like, right. it, it's come crazy. Yeah. I, um, Cookie Devils said you're a warrior. I have to agree <laughs> with that. What happened? <laughs> oh, one of the comments she just said. Yeah. Uh you're a warrior. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. Um, I definitely agree with that. So um, I just had, uh, well, two more questions, actually. I was wondering if you, if there's any um, people, um, artists or others that particularly have inspired you or guided you along the, the way. So I, you, we had, you sent me the questions before yeah. and I, I thought about, you know, I'm a voracious reader. I yeah. Mm-hmm. The words, I, like I said, your words are really powerful. And they, I, I, I see them and I see imagery and I see so much within a word. So um, like Anna Quinlan, I love, I love, uh, there's a beautiful artist and philosopher. She passed. Her name is uh, Florence Scovelshin. Mm-hmm. She, well, I mean, anybody she, called wisdom and she, she's had four different books, but I think the compilation of four, I'm not sure, but anyway, Florence Scovelshin, incredible. Mm-hmm. Marianne Williamson, who I read years ago, and I was like, what do you mean you turn to love? What is she talking about? Only two emotions, fear or love. I so get it now, and she's so brilliant, and she's so connected to, like, the truth of why we're here. So she's incredible. In terms of artists, again, words, Jenny Holzer, Barbara mm-hmm. Kruger, because I love beading, I love textured art, I love, uh, I love Micheline. I think she touches mm-hmm. upon it, and just, you know, her mixed media is beautiful. Liza Lou. Mm-hmm. love what she does um you know I also I happen to love Ed Boucher mm-hmm. um so yeah I would say those yeah. are my some of my favorites yeah that's interesting that makes a lot of sense I, I wasn't thinking about that but like yeah Jenny Holzer and Barbara Kruger are some of my favorite. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. um and I'm um, just, yeah, I would just wanted to ask a little bit about the, the mass project that you've been working on which is such a beautiful um and inspiring project so um, yeah Love to hear more about that and, and anything else you're working on right now. Yes. So I am, um, you know, uh, my friend, um, Natasha Schlesinger, who's a yeah. curator and um, she's beautiful. Her art news, New York, her handle. And uh, she's like, you know, you should do mass. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that it would be really powerful. And I was like, uh, okay. So I was like, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I don't think that, like, people think I like, think it. It's just, <laughs> I was like, I'll do this. Yeah. Grow into love. Yeah. Had you love? I don't know. I just like, on it and people <laughs> freaked out. Yes. I was like, oh, I get, wow. Okay. I mean, I've been doing all myself. Wow. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Yeah. I was <laughs> going to how many of I'm really tired. Do you know, like how many you've even made? Yeah. I mean, we had the first edition was 250. Wow. So I hand printed all of them. Yeah. I did find a sewer eventually, but oh. I, you know, obviously hand beating them as well. Yeah. And, um, it's been incredible and it's been 
you know, it, so, so I did it, right? Yeah. And then I understood why I did it. <laughs> I made my artwork accessible and I'm spreading the most important message and protecting people. Like, it's like my shield, mm -hmm. love but protect. And I would say that it was two years ago, love but protect. And I would say it all the time. Every, I don't know if you were at um, the core club when I did that speaking engagement. No. And I remember I looked at this, someone and I was like, oh, these are about love but protect. And I was like, wait, the love, I don't know. It just comes, I don't think about, I really don't think that much. I probably should have, no. <laughs> so yeah, the love. And then I was like, wow, this is great. I get it. Yeah. I got excited. Yeah. And I am so, I'm so happy. I feel proud. I really feel proud. Yeah. I'm, send, I'm sending a donation to Direct Leap, a nice amount of money. People are wearing it. They look beautiful they feel positive I wear them around people are like that's great I was like, yeah thank you so my second edition mm -hmm. we sold out of this one but the yeah. second edition with more protective gear with my artwork on it and I'm so excited it's so cool and it's so it's beautiful is uh Monday I'll release it Monday yep. the 18th at 5 p.m okay again a limited edition so okay I get I'll on, jump on it yeah <laughs> yeah but I'm not too quick to ship because I have to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm going to be a little more organized this time, so it'll be good. <laughs> um, no, that's that's exciting. We'll, we'll tune in uh, Monday at, at 5, you said? Yeah. You'll be announcing it? Okay. Um, yeah. There was just a question in the comments about if you were a beater as a child. No. No. No, yeah. no so I learned um, – so when I was a designer, I was, like, back and forth to India, and – you know, they don't have like factories there, at least how I did it. Mine was like artists and stuff. And okay. So there were these beaters and I was like, these people, are, I've never, it was now everything is people know about beating, but it was a hundred years ago. So it wasn't in the forefront. It was very, you know, to this like little enclave and Bombay and Delhi. And I was like, this is like nothing I've ever seen. I, I would sit with the artisans and I was, I couldn't even believe, loved it. Mm. I feel the beads. I just love it. Everything about it. And I don't know. It just was something. So I learned. I learned how to do the beading. I learned the craft. I learned embroidery, the hand embroidery, not the machine. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I felt when my art came to me, that was the only thing that made sense to make my art in. The words. I could have painted. I, I mean, I did study costume design. Okay. And um, I... So I knew like techniques, I wasn't great or anything, but I really learned in India. Okay. And it's the literal and figure of depth into self. The beats have depth and illumination, light, awakening. Like it just, that's what I'm saying. It just, right. it's kind of amazing if you just allow it. If you just that's, allow it, it'll all work out. Maybe not to your vision, but right. what you need. What you, what the universe knows you need. I really know that now. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So yeah, if you never thought of doing um, these these works in you know in another medium, it was just like okay, I'm doing. I'm, I'm no, doing I had no work. other choice. This yeah, is <laughs> that's the thing. It's like when you have no other choice, mm -hmm. like you just know it's right. Right. That's this is, is another great saying that I really. This is new for me, but it's mm -hmm. so good. It's like whatever brings peace and purpose stays. Mm -hmm. Whatever brings chaos and confusion goes. So when it feels right, right. there's no other way. Like you just oh yeah, of course like. Yeah, yeah. No other way. Yeah. With anything, though, not just art. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, there was just another question about the cost of the mask, but I guess they're they're sold out now. Well, but... they'll be the same. So so the second edition, which uh, releases on Monday, yeah. 45 for the cloth, 175 for uh, Swarovski crystals on cloth. And I'm also offering, a, which will surprise on Monday, Okay. Um, another within that, Okay. price range the around the like uh, about $65 uh another protective layer for yourself Great. to purchase awesome. um and then I'm offering like to mark this significant time and everything I'm doing framed beaded versions mm -hmm. um those were 500 I think they're gonna I think I, the cost will be a little bit more this time just that it was off on the pricing with the framing and everything so yeah uh with least and on Monday but that's you know that's like a piece of unique artwork you put on your wall so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 
Um, I think that the, that was about it. I'm, I'm so glad that we got to chat more and um, learn too. more Thank about you. your work. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I'm a big fan and um, I love, I love what you're doing and I love that it's, it's beautiful and there's a message and, you know, really, really speaks to me personally. So I appreciate what you do and, Thank you. Um, <laughs> and hopefully we'll chat again soon. I would love it. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye.